Test, test.
know. Sure. Yeah, JP had told me about that. So Thunder Bay Police Services for their added security and help. That would be yeah. a good thing to thank you. Man. Thanks. I don't follow the
Ladies and gentlemen, please join Norm Slongo and the Thunder Bay Community Band in the singing of our national anthem, O Canada. Six for the invocation and scripture readings. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. But righteous people are protected by God and will never suffer torment. It is a foolish mistake to think that righteous people die and that their death is a terrible evil. They leave us but it is not a disaster. In fact, the righteous are at peace. It may appear that they have suffered punishment, but they have the confident hope of immortality. Their sufferings were minor compared with the blessings they will receive. God has tested them like gold in a furnace and found them worthy to be with him. He has accepted them just as he accepts the sacrifice which his worshippers burn on the altar. When God comes to reward the righteous, they will blaze out against the wicked like fire in dry straw. They will rule over nations and peoples, and the Lord will be their king forever. The word of the Lord. Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. The souls of the righteous are in the hands of God. Their bodies are buried in peace, but their names liveth forevermore. At the eleventh hour of the eleventh day of the eleventh month, time stands still for a moment. And we remember those who died, not for war, but for a world that would be free and at peace. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, we are coming to that portion of our ceremony where we observe the tradition of silence. Please be aware that there will be three gun volleys. And I invite you now to stand as you are able. Let us pray. Almighty God, as you have gathered your people together this day in hallowed remembrance, we give you thanks for all who laid down their lives for our sake, for whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. Let the memory of their devotion ever be an example to us, that we at the last 
being faithful until death, may receive with them the crown of life. O God, our Father, we thank you for those valiant hearts who at the time of sovereign and country laid down their lives in the cause of freedom. We pray that we may hold high the torch which they entrusted to us, that their sacrifice may not have been in vain. Unite all the peace-loving peoples of our world in one holy purpose, to defend the principles of freedom and brotherhood for which these valiant hearts lived and died. In the name of the great Prince of Peace, we pray. Amen. Lord God of hosts, be with us yet, lest we forget, lest we forget. They shall grow, they shall grow, not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. Please be seated. Before we begin the laying of the wreaths, I'd like to mention that at 11 o'clock, Royal Canadian Legion past the District Commander Jim Ash has laid a wreath at the Cenotaph at Thunder, Thunder Bay City Hall. I would also like to recognize the sacrifice of Corporal Nathan Cirillo, killed while standing guard at our war memorial in Ottawa, and Warrant Officer Patrice Vincent, killed in Quebec simply because he was wearing a military uniform. We will remember them. Uh, one other point I'd like to mention is 
on the stage here. Unfortunately, we don't have any way to properly display it, but there's a small cross decorated with poppy quarters. This morning, a young lady approached a police officer and asked him if he would bring it to the Fort William Gardens to, uh, to uh, lay to, and, and make uh, memory of those killed uh, as, a, as their sacrifice. And uh, if you get a chance, please come have a look at it. This year we are honored to have Mrs. Marion Leet as our Silver Cross representative. Mrs. Leet is the cousin of Arthur Pickles, a sailor who served on HMS Repulse in World War II. At the age of 21, his ship went down in the South China Sea on December 10, 1941. Mrs. Leet's father-in-law, Gunner Henry Leet, also served in the Royal Artillery and was killed in action on the Gothic Line in Italy on September 14, 1944, at the age of 33. The Government of Canada, Mary Cazoras. Government of Ontario, MPP Bill Morrow. City of Thunder Bay, Councillor Joel Verderamo. Veterans Affairs Canada, El Morenci and Roy Lamour. Royal Canadian Legion branches 129, Pauline Olinsky, 149, Chester Ballack, and 225, Clifford Kerslake. Branch 129, Ladies Auxiliary, Tony Lynn Stesco. Branch 149, Ladies Auxiliary, Joyce Bondon. Army Navy Air Force Unit 257, T. Schelling. Naval Veterans B.O., Fourth Field Ambulance Association J. McRae, Hong Kong Veterans R. Edy.
HMCS Griffin, Commander P. Fleming, Lake Superior Scottish Regiment and 18th Service Battalion Senate, Captain D. Oja and G. Kasaurus, Salvation Army, Major Puttacombe, Six, uh, 18th Field Ambulance, Captain LeBlanc and Captain Kumara. City of Superior, Wisconsin, K. Moore, Richard I. Bong, American Legion Post 435, D. Kangas and K. Kangas, American Legion Auxiliary Post 435, S. Patterson. Thunder Bay Police, Deputy Chief A. Hay, Thunder Bay Police Services Board, Vice Chair D. Smith, Thunder Bay Police Association, S. Vereschak. Royal Canadian Mounted Police, N. Roy, Ontario Provincial Police Veterans, G. Arnold, Thunder Bay Professional Firefighters Association, R. Hay. Superior North Emergency Medical Services, N. Gale, Thunder Bay Police Youth Corps, Director J. Young and Cadet R. Mahagan. Thunder Bay Crime Stoppers, C. Mills, 66 Royal Canadian Air Cadet Squadron, Captain Jeff Barabash and Flight Corporal Z. Wood. Two two nine four Army Cadets, Naval Cadet Zorowski. Mrs. A. A. Matisse, 309 Royal Canadian Sea Cadet Corps, Fort William, and leading Seaman Murphy. Scouts Canada, Beaver E. Bergman and Scout R. Tapak, Girl Guides of Canada, S. Reynolds. Beta Sigma Phi Sorority, M. Marson, Canadian Lakehead Exhibition, D. Mosa, United Commercial Travelers, Bert Van Trudeau. National Association of Federal Retirees, a cadet, Catholic District School Board, L. Foster. St. Paul's Anglican Church, Archdeacon Deborah Kraft. Holy Family Parish, J. Tribe and L. Morgan, 
Lincoln District School Board, Chairman D. Massaro. St. Elizabeth School, S. Adams and B. Hole, Lincoln Elementary Teachers of Ontario, D. Paddington. Canadian Union of Postal Workers, W. Johnson, Confederation College, P. Doe, Dennis Franklin Cromarty High School, D. Achi Pinescom. Unifor Local number 39, Lee Baskin. QP Local 87, T. Milani. QP Local 96, B. Bordelin. Unifor Local 1075, C. Felice. Unifor Local 1075 and retirees, G. Rusnick. Unifor Local 1759, R. Curry. Dutch Canadian Society, I. Koopman and D. Koopman, Lickett Shrine Club, G. Poulin. Elks Lodge number 82, T. Carlson. Royal Purple Lodge number 14, M. Carlson. OSSTF District 6A, M. Denford Cox. Loyal Order of Moose number 844, Pete Cholin. Women of the Moose 1338, H. Olson. Fort William Rotary Club of Thunder Bay, J. Phillips. Red Cross, R. Kilgore, Knights of Columbus, K. Martinkus, and N. Knott. Thunder Bay Multicultural Association, J. Squire, Da Vinci Center, P. Sacchino, and D. Florida, Fiorito.
St. John's Ambulance, G. Bailey and D. Sustawenko. Northwestern Ontario Aviation Heritage Center, J. Milne, Viterra, the Cadet. Public Service Alliance of Canada, J. Kerber. Thunder Bay Hydro, F. Puglia, Thunder Bay Meter Readers, J. Erler. Thunder Bay Telephone, D. Tapai Attic, Thunder Bay and District Injured Workers, G. Snyder, Thunder Bay Law Association, L. Stam. Thunder Bay Military Family Resource Center, C. Nicholson Lopaker, Thunder Bay Port Authority, M. Parker. Sunset Memorial Gardens and Jenkins Funeral Home, H. McNally and T. Derrick. Westport Prosvita and Ladies Auxiliary, M. Papiza and W. Otway, Wardrop Engineering, Tetra Tech, B. Stark, St. George Society, Ontario Public Service Union, Region 7, P. Valenti. G. Goodwin, in memory of Morris Goodwin. Don Oram and P. Oram for William Oram. If I have missed anyone, and I think I have, uh, please come up now and lay the wreath. If there are any other individual or organizations that would like to lay a wreath, please do so now. I would now like to introduce our guest speaker, 
Mr. Bob Furman. Mr. Furman has worked in the museum field since 1988 and as a museum administrator for over 24 years. He has a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh and a Master's degree in Public History from the University of Wisconsin Milwaukee along with certification in museum studies. He began his career at the Milwaukee County Historical Society before becoming executive director of the Mercer County Historical Society in Western Pennsylvania in 1990. He has also served as director of the Kenosha County Historical Society and CEO of the Clark County Historical Society in Springfield, Ohio, before coming to the Richard I. Wong Veterans Historical Center in 2006. Mr. Foreman resides in Superior, Wisconsin. Please help me welcome Mr. Bob Furman. Good morning. It is a great honor to speak to you here today. This is my second visit to Thunder Bay for your Remembrance Day ceremonies, and I must tell you how moved I was after my first visit. You see, over my lifetime down in the U.S., we've seen a lot of reactions to military service, to war, and to veterans. I've interviewed many Vietnam vets. Some of them talk about coming home from their tours of duty and enduring verbal and other abuse from their fellow citizens. People who didn't stop to ask if they wanted to be in Vietnam or how they felt about the war, people who simply decided to treat them as representatives of an unpopular foreign policy, despite the fact that none of those average, everyday boots on the ground had any say in U.S. foreign policy or, before 1971, could most of them even vote. I was born in 1960. My dad was a career chief petty officer. By age nine or 10, even I started to see the illogic of it all, abusing the warrior who answered a call. And this was even as my father was heaving a sigh of relief when my older brother drew a high draft number, which meant that Tom probably wouldn't be called to serve. And he wasn't, and my dad was glad. For the U.S., the Vietnam era eventually helped usher in the all-volunteer armed services concept. It killed the market for military toys, and it left an angry taste in the mouths of vets who couldn't understand how their fellow citizens could be so ungrateful, blaming them for doing what their country required of them. This mindset seemed to last for several years. And then the Marine barracks in Lebanon was destroyed in 1983. I remember a guy I played soccer with at the time coming to a game shortly after that attack. And he announced that he was going to join the Marines because he just had to do something. And shortly thereafter, he was gone to serve. The rise of the terrorism threat that slowly built from there to its awful crescendo on September 11, 2001, was an 18-year period that saw U.S. troops increasingly deployed to counter that threat and also serving as U.N. peacekeepers, many times alongside Canadian troops. And during those years, we also marked the 75th anniversary of World War I and the 50th anniversary of World War II. And I think people who had been uncomfortable with military action began to realize that while it is the hallmark of democracies to use military force sparingly, there are times when this hardest of political decisions has to be made and our service men and women are put in harm's way. Those major anniversaries, when we remember what our fathers and our grandfathers had to do in those earlier worldwide conflicts, well, I think it opened some people's eyes and those people, to their credit, admitted that they were wrong to treat Vietnam vets as they did. Was that sentiment too late? Well, not too late for many, but too late for some. And then suddenly, six years after we celebrated the 50th anniversary of World War II, our world changed one September morning. 
Since then, our democracies, working in various coalitions with allies, allies that we love and some that we just tolerate, we have all undertaken to somehow answer and fight the threats of terrorism, threats that become real-life heartaches all too often, as you here in Canada know too well. Still in all, following that time and the years since, I've seen something that disturbs me a little bit. It's this, this use of honoring veterans and honoring military service for gain. And I mean, I'm talking about associating, honoring our veterans and honoring our military, and they tie it in with a car sales promotion a brand of beer, or a sports league. And I guess it is that frustration, seeing the honoring of the military and veterans used to promote commercial enterprises that gives me a greater appreciation of what I saw here on my first visit to Thunder Bay and your Remembrance Day ceremony. Here on Remembrance Day, you gather to render genuine, dignified, solemn honors for the sacrifices of the men and women who protect us, who defend our democracies and who paid the ultimate price. For you here in Thunder Bay, it, it, it's, it was places like South Africa, Passchendaele, Vimy Ridge, Dieppe, Juneau Beach, in Korea at Cap Yong, in the Gulf War, and in Iraq and Afghanistan. Those are just some of the places where our Canadian allies have paid that price. And I'm, I'm actually proud to say I knew about all those places except Cap Yon before I was invited to speak today because my first visit here seven years ago prompted me to learn about what it was that inspired this solemn, wonderful ceremony you offer up each year. Many of you know us down in Superior from our local American Legion Post's annual visit here on Remembrance Day and many of your vets know us from traveling down to visit us each year for our Memorial Day ceremonies in May. Every week at the Bong Center, the American Legion's Honor Guard performs their Flag of Remembrance ceremony at the, at the museum. In addition, in addition to the U.S. National Ensign and the POW MIA flag, they raise the Canadian maple leaf on its own pole. And when they do, I think about Passchendaele, Vimy Ridge, Dieppe, and all those other places consecrated by the sacrifice of your service men and women. And while our veterans only physically stand with your veterans on two days of the year, that is Memorial Day and today Remembrance Day, flying the flag of Canada every day at the Bong Center and knowing you, our neighbors, fight as hard as any troops in the cause of freedom, well, pardon my expression, but it makes me damn proud to be here today and to be asked to speak to you about your Remembrance Day ceremonies and what it means to me. Damn proud to have a chance to help honor your valiant dead. In closing, I want to thank you for your gracious invitation, and I thank you for letting me be a small part of your inspiring ceremony. And as a citizen of the United States, I thank Canada for being the wonderful ally it is and I thank you here in Thunder Bay for the introduction to Canada's Remembrance Day seven years ago. When I left here that day, the phrase, lest we forget, was more meaningful. The poem in Flanders Field, more evocative. And the anthem, O Canada, which you sing so proudly, became all the more lyrical for me. Thank you, Canada. This American stands humbly in awe of your Remembrance Day. Thank you, Mr. Furman, and we really do appreciate the relationship we have with our American friends south of the border. We'll now uh, call upon Sea Cadet Master Seaman Kira Buckle for a recitation of In Flanders Fields.
in Flanders Fields. In Flanders Fields, the poppies glow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders Fields. Thank you, Kira. We'll now have our passing of the torch ceremony. The torch shall remain symbolic of justice, honor, and freedom throughout our land. These were the principles for which our comrades fought and died. We of today and tomorrow covenant to hold high, lest we break faith with those who died. Justice, honor, and freedom are our charge for now and forever. We serve best by fostering these principles in ourselves, our children, and their children, so long as the Royal Canadian Legion shall survive. Today, Comrade Bill Bissonette of uh, Royal Canadian Slovak Legion 129 and a World War II navigator of uh, Lancaster bombers will now pass the torch to Captain Darla Oja, 18 Service Company.
Thank you. Please be seated. I'd like to thank everyone for attending today, especially uh, those uh, uh, school children. I know there's a lot of them out uh, in the crowd today, and we thank them and their teachers for bringing them here. I would also like to thank our friends from the USA for joining us, as they do every year. Uh, their numbers were down a wee bit, uh, but they're still coming out and uh, as, as our usual good neighbor. And safe drive. And safe drive back because I know there's uh, there's snow south of the border. I especially would like to thank the uh, this year the Thunder Bay Police Service for their increased presence as we know uh, of, of the events of, of the recent past. And uh, they have a good presence here today and helping to keep us all safe. So thank you very much. <laughs> Certainly as you saw on the, the march in, the ranks of uh, our veterans who are able to march is getting very thin, uh, but there are a number of other veterans in the, the crowd seated here and up in the stands, and I would like those veterans to please wave, stand if you can, and uh, let us acknowledge them and the sacrifices they made. Thank you for that. Now call on Father Terry Sawchuk, Padre of Royal Canadian Legion Slovak Branch 129 for the benediction and closing prayer. In heartfelt remembrance and in thanksgiving, we pray. Almighty God, we offer you thanks for the life and health given us to carry the torch this far. And we ask for your divine help for the future. We offer thanks for your presence with us this day. And may your guiding light fill the hearts of all assembled here. Be near the bereaved in their solitude and in their sorrow, accompany those who mourn the loss of all who have laid down their lives for their friends, for their families, and for their nation. And give us all the will to hold the torch still high, to be an inspiration to all the world that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, may be with us now and through all eternity. Amen. The Peace Prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. 
O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Please stand for God Save the Queen. Beside Comrade Burak is his grandson, Corporal Charles Burak, a rifleman currently with the Lake Superior Scottish Regiment. Parade Commander, prepare to march off the parade. 